Sharma already said about me, I'm an uh, independent consulting engineer and uh, I'm playing uh, uh, a role in the International Tunneling and Underground Space Association where I have been a vice president uh, between 2002 and 2007. And uh, we can go to the next slide, please. Which gives an overview of what the content of today's uh, presentation will be. So I will basically talk about uh, mega tunnel projects and uh, after giving some uh, uh, some overview, understanding, and uh, in the preface, what the development of the uh, global uh, population is in the rural area, in the urban area. And then I will talk about different scenarios uh, and what the connections respectively, the disconnections are at this moment. Then I will talk about uh, the types of projects which we have. Basically, uh, in the focus, there will be transportation projects, uh, both uh, railway and highway, uh, but in particular also on bridges and tunnels, because many projects of the mega projects nowadays are a combination of bridges and tunnels, both when it comes to highways and also to, to railroads. And I will talk about uh, what uh, and why uh, mega projects are so important uh, for the civil society of our countries, what mega cities uh, are, uh, uh, how they are defined and how they are developing uh, for the next uh, 30 years until the middle of uh, this century. Then I will talk about uh, uh, growth and awareness also in regards to mega projects and what uh, the uh, impact on the employment, respectively the unemployment is. Then I will talk about the design of transport tunnels and uh, uh, the, the, the numbers here are four bridge tunnel project and five future. In fact, it is five bridge tunnel project and three future at other tunnel project. And then we will come up with a summary and conclusions of uh, today's uh, presentation and uh, online virtual conference. In my opinion, the most uh, uh, challenging and, and changing uh, was the beginning of the uh, uh, channel tunnel, which connects uh, the uh, the, the European continent and the British uh, island, the United Kingdom. So this was, in my opinion, the begin of uh, mega tunnel projects at, at a global scale. And what you can see here is the entrance on this slide to the Euro tunnel, as it is also called. It is called Euro tunnel and, and sometimes channel tunnel. It is under the channel, which is the uh, sea between the uh, United Kingdom and uh, France. And uh, uh, we can go to the next slide, please. The next slide uh, talks about some of the details and the origin of the channel tunnel. Now, in fact, uh, mega, mega tunnel projects and mega projects in general are long lasting project, long lasting starting with the planning uh, and the planning, for instance, for the for the channel tunnel or Euro tunnel, started uh, in the times of uh, uh, Emperor Napoleon uh, in France in the year uh, 1802. And you can see that uh, after uh, 186 years, almost 200 years later. The construction started in uh, 1988, and after six years, the construction was finished and the, the channel tunnel was open. The channel tunnel is a railway tunnel that connects the uh, United Kingdom with France and is located beneath the English Channel at the Strait of Dover. Now, my personal experience with the channel tunnel started in the late 1970s. 
And uh, I went there to a, a exploration shaft in 1978, 1977, 78. And I was there uh, in, in Calais on the French side and I went down into the uh, exploration uh, through the uh, deep shaft into the exploration tunnel. And I came back to Austria with the feeling that this project is never going to happen because almost 200 years now have, have gone already. And uh, there have been so many uh, political impacts and, and uh, uh, you know, and I was wrong. I was wrong because uh, 10 years later, it, it started uh, with the construction. So uh, uh, it is the fixed link and the only fixed link between Great Britain and the European uh, mainland. Its dimensions are, uh, it is uh, 50 kilometers long. Uh, it is 75 meters deep below the seabed at its lowest point and 115 meters below the sea level. The channel tunnel uh, from the geotechnical and geomechanical point of view is what I call, it's a chocolate tunnel because uh, chocolate and, and chalk or, or limestone as it is uh, in the uh, geologic term called uh, is, is very similar. So this tunnel uh, basically was, was a tunnel which was challenging management which was challenging PBM technology. It gave a lot of a very important impact to the PBM technology. And uh, the, the underwater section actually 38 kilometers. And uh, with that 38 kilometers, it is the longest underwater section of any tunnel in the world. The speed uh, of the trains uh, is uh, 160 kilometers per hour, the maximum speed of the trains. And uh, who is the owner of the channel tunnel? The channel tunnel is owned and operated by a company uh, which was formerly called the Group Eurotunnel. Uh, and it's now called the, the, the Get Link, the link between the, the two continents. The completion of the channel tunnel has inspired hope on many other projects, many mega projects, into a number of significant engineering projects around the world. Therefore, I call it, this is a mega project which really created the breakthrough for mega projects in the world. And this is something which is yet not fully understood, understood not fully recognized worldwide that how important it is to have uh, functioning uh, infrastructure, transportation infrastructure for the whole development of the world. We can go to the next uh, slide. And the next slide uh, shows you eight, actually eight uh, mega projects, uh, which are all, they have something in common these mega projects and they are disconnections. They are showing that between one, uh, uh, one side and uh, the other side, uh, there is a need for a connection, but it is now disconnected. And we can start uh, to talk about these disconnections uh, with the Gibraltar tunnel. The Gibraltar tunnel, which is a link between Africa, North Africa in particular, or Morocco and Europe or Spain. Uh, it is uh, due to the depths of the Strait of Gibraltar, which is uh, between 1,000 and 3,000 feet deep, that it will be challenging, uh, among others, uh, to remove the exhaust if we have a, a tunnel uh, and we have some exhaust uh, to remove in the tunnel. So that would be something which uh, will be a, one of the challenges. Another challenge, of course, is the uh, geomechanical challenge because uh, we will have uh, high water pressures at the Gibraltar tunnel up to almost 50 bar. We never had a tunnel boring machine uh, which has been facing 50 bars. So this is real another PBM technology challenge 
with this Gibraltar tunnel. And uh, I have been working on, on this Gibraltar tunnel about uh, 15 years ago. Uh, and uh, I, I really uh, understood that uh, uh, this is uh, one of the challenges for our, uh, uh, for our tunneling and TBM tunneling industry in particular in the future, but I'm sure we can solve the problem. Then we have another uh, disconnection between Sweden and Finland. There is a proposed tunnel uh, between these two countries. While one section is over 600 feet deep, uh, it is having islands in between, which will ease the connection with bridges. So this is already a kind of a, a pre-phased pre look into uh, other uh, combinations of bridges and tunnels to, to uh, solve connections, to, uh, to uh, disregard these connections uh, between Sweden and Finland. And uh, I'm sure it's going to, to become in the future uh, one, of these, uh, one of these big uh, uh, transport projects. But also uh, there is another uh, so-called uh, uh, Korea, Japan friendship tunnel system between Korea, South Korea in particular, and uh, between Japan. It is a proposed 120 mile long or 180 kilometer long bridge tunnel system, which is linking Karatsu in Korea uh, with uh, 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 in, in Japan uh, with Busan, uh, where there are four islands in between. And this is also uh, a challenge for us as uh, tunnel engineers to uh, think about uh, using a, another tunnel bridge system between uh, the uh, Korea, South Korea and uh, Japan. And then we have uh, uh, a connection also between in, in, in planning stage between Japan and Russia, uh, which is a 28 mile long uh, Sakhalin Hokkaido tunnel, which uh, is supposed to link Hokkaido to Sakhalin in, in Russia. The tunnel between Sakhalin and mainland Russia, plus the extension uh, of the Baikal Amur main line, uh, railway line to create a rail link between Japan, Russia, and Asia. So that is a, a, another very interesting uh, uh, connection. Then we have uh, the idea to connect uh, Taiwan with China under the Strait of Taiwan. A Taiwan Strait Tunnel Project is proposed as an undersea uh, tunnel to connect Pingdan in China to Xinchu in Taiwan to become part of the Beijing Taipei Expressway. So that is another interesting project also and a very challenging uh, project uh, for us as uh, tunnel engineers. Then there is an old uh, idea to connect uh, Sicily in the south of Italy uh, and, and make a connection either across uh, or underneath the Strait of Messina, which is a very busy ferry traffic uh, strait. And the two mile bridge is planned to eliminate the need for ferries. The construction date has been postponed again and again. The last time uh, there was the former prime minister of Italy by the name very well known uh, Mr. Berlusconi, he tried to do that, but Mr. Berlusconi now also get retired. Then we have a project uh, between Saudi and Egypt, uh, the so-called causeway, Saudi Egypt causeway, which is a proposal for a bridge between the Sinai Peninsula uh, and uh, Egypt and uh, is located in the northern part of Saudi Arabia. Another very interesting project. And then uh, there is another, uh, the, the biggest uh, uh, ground transportation project ever thought about in the world is the so-called transatlantic tunnel, uh, which is supposed to connect uh, United Kingdom with United States 
under the Atlantic, uh, which is a proposed 3,100 mile transit uh, tunnel that would span the Atlantic Ocean. And the cost estimate is ranging between 175 uh, billion and 12 trillion of tunnels. So in my opinion, the idea is nice. I think it has no chance to be uh, realized. We can go to the next slide, please. And the next slide talks about uh, the challenges of mega projects uh, in, in, in general. What are mega projects? Mega projects are large scale and very complex ventures that typically cost $1 billion uh, or more and takes many years to develop and build involving multiple public and private stakeholders. Uh, they should be also transformational and uh, should have an impact on millions of people in order to be called a mega project. Uh, uh, there is a relative approach needed where a much smaller project, for instance, a $100 million project, which is not a very small project, could constitute uh, in the future a mega project. So that, that's uh, something like to advance, uh, 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 look into a mega project. Mega projects are also temporary projects which are characterized by large investment commitment, vast complexity, and a long lasting impact on the economy, uh, on the environment, and a long lasting impact to the society also. So all these characterizes uh, mega projects. Mega projects make up uh, up to 8% of the total global gross domestic product. 8%, uh, I mean, that's a significant amount of money. And the mega project refer not only to construction projects, but also to decommissioning projects. So construction and decommissioning uh, together uh, characterizes mega projects. Uh, they can reach multi-billion dollar projects. Uh, they should have a high level of innovation and complexity and are affected by techno, socio-economic and organizational challenges. So all together uh, is uh, uh, something which uh, characterizes a mega project uh, in order to better understand and to not be afraid of touching, uh, touching uh, an idea. We have to understand there are many complexities there should be a high innovation level, for instance, at the Gibraltar tunnel uh, with the high water pressure or with the uh, remove, uh, removal of, of exhaust and uh, uh, with the de further development of uh, PVM technologies. So that, that is all something which really, really is a challenge and fascinating aspect of tunnel engineering. We can go to the next uh, slide, please. And the next slide uh, also talks about uh, projects and mega projects in particular, uh, which are in discussion for decades, uh, for decades. Yet what has changed uh, is the exponential growth of the capabilities. So uh, again, take the, the channel tunnel, UK and France connecting and think about uh, at uh, that time, uh, beginning of the, uh, of the 19th century, Napoleon in France, uh, he was thinking about the idea, but of course, uh, there are the, the tools, the technology has not been available at that time. So each new technology breakthrough makes difficult projects of the past seem to be infinitely more doable today. So this technology development, and uh, we have so many aspects nowadays, which are reinforcing, which are uh, also uh, talking and uh, teaching us 
uh, that uh, we can we can do it. So it's more doable today. Countries are being judged by their willingness to tackle super difficult uh, mega project. So uh, once again, uh, looking about uh, Channel Tunnel, there have been two, uh, one prime minister in the United Kingdom, which was uh, a lady at that time, uh, and uh, Lady Thatcher uh, at that time. And in France, there was uh, a president of France, uh, François Mitterrand at that time. And these two very different, very uh, much uh, adversive characters, but they joined because they wanted to, to do, have this done and they have been managing successful. The construction of mega project will begin uh, with uh, next decades where the interconnectedness uh, in the entire world will radically be changed by these mega projects, uh, some of them, which I explained uh, in the table before. The next project, please. The next uh, slide, please. Uh, talks about mega projects in a general context. What is uh, mega project causing? Uh, first of all, uh, we have the change between our, our rural and urban communities. People are relocated and population clusters grow. Uh, so does the demand for major infrastructure improvements to help manage the traffic, to help manage the water supply, the sewage, uh, to help manage uh, power supply and living strains in these growing economies. We will uh, just see that uh, now we have almost 8 billion people population in the world. When I was a student at the university 60 years ago, uh, it was just 2 billion. So we, uh, we quadrupled, we did four times more population nowadays than that. Then, then the mega project become a source of national pride and the status symbol for emerging uh, economies. You know, uh, people always have, uh, have a feel that uh, competition is something which uh, is creative. So in the Middle Ages, competition has been uh, between the height of towers, of churches, uh, between the size of, of uh, uh, temples and uh, the, the size of chapels. Uh, and uh, we have seen that both in India and we have seen that uh, in, in uh, uh, other Middle East countries uh, from coming from Europe, uh, Taj Mahal in India is, is something which was the product also of the feeling of the competition and pride and status symbol uh, uh, at that time. And it's a, it's a jewel of an architecture nowadays. I would call it also at that time, it has been a mega project to uh, make uh, Taj Mahal happen. Mega projects will rise in priority as a potential source of work for the future unemployment or for the future employment. So mega projects uh, have something uh, which uh, they not only stimulate uh, the construction as such, but also uh, the industry which is connected uh, with the infrastructure. And uh, it's very, very important to to be realized and it's very important to be materialized. A uh, mega project will be based on unprovable claims. Yes, uh, there are always pros and cons. The spin off economies alone will create an overpowering momentum to push, uh, to push mega projects. So, mega projects really have a strong, uh, uh, what the French call esprit vital, the, the vital. Uh, spirit, the, the mentality to create something and the mentality to uh, give satisfaction also. So we go to the next, uh, uh, next slide. Yes, thank you. So this slide shows the world urban and rural population development. So if we look to the 1950s, what we see here uh, is the red line. The red line is the urban population which at that time has been much, much less than the rural population. Then you look when the two, the red and the blue line are crossing 
around uh, 2005, uh, between 2005 and 2010. And uh, what, what we can see here is that after 2010, the uh, uh, urban population has increased. If we look to the, uh, to the end of the red line in uh, 2013, in 10 years from now, we have uh, about uh, uh, two thirds of the population will be urban and one third of the population will be, will be uh, a rural population. Uh, so roughly uh, that, that is the prediction uh, of the population development. The next slide, please. The next slide uh, talks about uh, new projects uh, and what is including the growing list of mega projects include everything from tunnels and bridges and dams and highways, airports, hospitals, skyscrapers, floating cities, wind farms, offshore oil and gas rigs and so on. So all these are uh, uh, growing, growing new projects, mega projects. Uh, in particular, with regards to new cities, uh, we have in the uh, environment of new cities, uh, we have aluminum uh, smelters, global communication systems, aerospace missions, particle accelerators, entire new cities, and much more. And uh, on the right side of the picture, you can see uh, the, uh, pro the, the, the picture from the Itaipu Dam, which is, uh, has been one of the biggest, or maybe uh, nowadays the second biggest uh, dam in the world. Uh, it's in uh, Brazil and Argentina and uh, Paraguay in the so-called three country corner of these three countries. Uh, it is a, a typical example of a 20th century mega project uh, I have been visiting there. We have had a World Panel Congress uh, in, uh, in Itaipu also in 2013, 2013, I believe, yes, after, after Geneva. The redefinition of new project is that there are more major bridge and tunnel projects that will redefine the societies over the coming decades. So uh, this is uh, what has been shown uh, in the pictures before, the eight project, uh, the combination of bridges and tunnels. And I will go into more detail about the difference between bridges and tunnels with one of the next pictures. And uh, let's uh, take a look to picture number 11. Picture number 11 shows us uh, Yes, it shows us the differences uh, for bridges and tunnels. One of the oldest uh, uh, projects uh, is the Chesapeake Bay project in the east of the United States, uh, pretty close to Washington, to the uh, capital of the United States. So for many, many decades, the infrastructure proponents have argued the relative advantage and disadvantages of tunnels and bridges or a combination of both. So the Chesapeake Bay Bridge uh, is uh, claimed by the uh, Bridge and Tunnel Commission of Chesapeake Bay that this uh, has transformed into a tunnel as an engineering wonder of the world, the Chesapeake Bay uh, Bridge and Tunnel engineering wonder. Tunnels run about a mile under the bay, allowing ships to cross above. And tunnels connect the bridge uh, with uh, four man-made islands in between. The, the depth of the water is not very deep. It's between 25 and 100 feet or 30 meters. So the, combi the, the bridge uh, uh, look far more impressive than tunnels. That's always, you know, that, that's a sort of a uh, disadvantage that uh, we have to, uh, to, to fight against, uh, that uh, bridges are famous, you know, you can do a lot of decoration to the bridges and it will be seen from far uh, away. 
that this is a, a bridge, a cable, uh, cable span bridge or whatever type of bridge that may be. Uh, the tunnel is underground. You don't see the tunnel as a structure itself. They pose several changes when it comes to uh, ships underpassing uh, and weather related issue and ongoing maintenance and repair issues. You know, uh, this is uh, uh, something in particular in uh, countries where the weather is changing a lot like in the Scandinavian countries and the Scandinavian countries, and we will talk about that uh, also uh, briefly, uh, that uh, it is more safe to be uh, in a tunnel than to be on a, on a bridge when it's a snowstorm, when the temperatures fall below 10 or below 20 degrees minus. And uh, when it comes to, uh, to maintenance also, uh, uh, these bridges are, are more, more difficult to maintain and to operate. When it's in the tunnel, you know, you can uh, really be sure you drive whatever, uh, the train or a car through the tunnel. It is uh, weather independent. Okay, so these are differences and challenges. And now let's talk about uh, uh, highways and railroads. One key decision point will be whether to design it strictly for cars or trucks and trains. And uh, it is also uh, touching the subject of future technological developments. Uh, we, we know uh, when, we, when we talk about uh, uh, trains uh, 100 years ago, there have been more reluctance uh, against uh, tunnels because uh, these trains have been driven by steam uh, and uh, later by, by diesel uh, locomotive, but exhaust in any, in any, uh, in any way. And uh, then we have electric trains and, and uh, then we are going into new technologies with high speed trains and uh, uh, hyperloop uh, uh, systems and uh, magnetic levitation systems and so on. So we have to think about uh, the design for what the design is really taking care. Uh, whether it should be uh, included also pro with provisions for future forms of Hyperloop style tube transportation or not. Uh, if we take again uh, the channel tunnel between UK and France, it is only designed to accommodate a passenger train between the two countries in spite of the fact that uh, we have uh, three, actually we have three tunnels uh, in the channel tunnel. A tube train that doesn't have cars or trucks, no cargo and no provision for potentially much faster trains. So that needs, needs to be taken into consideration. What is the use of the, of the tunnel and how will it affect the design? The mega project in construction, uh, we have a brilliant uh, example with the Fehmarn Belt Tunnel, which is connecting Denmark with Germany. And the works there have, been, have begun already. There we have uh, a, a tunnel under the Baltic Sea, uh, which is 18 kilometers long <clears throat> and will descend to a depth of up to 40 meters beneath the Baltic Sea. It's a tunnel for road and rail, and it will be the world's longest immersed tunnel. So basically uh, immersed tunnels or sunken tube tunnels, it's also called, uh, are very rare. They need a very, very special uh, technology, very much uh, depending on organizational managerial uh, aspects and uh, Environmental aspects, of course, every project nowadays uh, has to take into consideration environmental aspect. So that is uh, that is something which is uh, also taken into con uh, into uh, consideration at the Fehmarn Belt Tunnel, which is uh, already in construction right now. So the next uh, slide is uh, the slide uh, again on the Fehmarn Belt Tunnel. Uh, 
Please take a look to the cross section of that tunnel and uh, you will see that uh, there are four lane motorway and twin track electrified railway to connect Denmark with Germany. Uh, this is an alternative to the current ferry service and it reduces the time uh, which is uh, on the ferry for more than one hour. I think it's about one and a half hours. It reduces the time from uh, Denmark to Germany to only seven minutes. So <clears throat> this shows you the trench uh, in, the, in the ocean, uh, in the Baltic Sea here uh, with the protection layer on top, the general feel, the locking feel, the gravel bed also, and uh, the existing uh, seabed. So uh, <clears throat> that is a fascinating project. Uh, and uh, it is uh, uh, maybe one project uh, which we can, I, I say maybe, which we can visit uh, at the WTC 2022, which happens in Copenhagen in Denmark. So maybe I, I think they will organize an uh, excursion to the Fehmarn Belt Tunnel, which will be very, very interesting to look at. Let's go to the next slide, please. The next slide gives an answer to the question, why do we want to have uh, mega projects? There are uh, very impressive uh, uh, facts. Uh, people are no more impressed by projects which cost between uh, 50 and 100 million dollars, which uh, in the past have been big projects. Uh, but now because of the uh, increasing number of uh, mega projects, it's not so impressive anymore. There's an explosion in the number of 1 billion plus uh, projects bigger than 1 billion with some projects in Saudi Arabia, which uh, will likely exceed $1 trillion of uh, in investment of construction cost. Uh, then uh, we have also to look into what are tomorrow's mega projects. The ones we hear about today are merely scratching the surface of tomorrow's mega projects and the massive undertakings that will happen over the coming decades. So the coming decades, uh, actually during this century, uh, will be a century of, of mega projects for sure. Uh, it is uh, so much offering uh, benefits to the society uh, as a whole in, in our world. There are several important reasons why these major projects are happening. And uh, please take a look to the next uh, slide number 16 projects where, where we can see the mega projects, the mega cities, uh, and many of the mega projects are happening in uh, the context of these mega cities, where we have the accumulation of mega cities in Asia, basically, including, of course, all mega cities in, in India, in China but also uh, big societies uh, and, and big uh, uh, growing uh, mega cities in Indonesia, Japan, Korea. And uh, so uh, the market, the market and the, the need uh, is here. The people which relocate from uh, rural to urban communities and uh, the uh, population uh, clusters are growing also. There's a growing demand for any kind of infrastructure uh, and uh, within one uh, uh, online uh, session, we cannot cover all of them, but uh, I think I, I can make it clear that this uh, infrastructure will be underground infrastructure and will help to manage the traffic the water, sewage, power, and living strains of these growing economies. And the leaders of megacities will be exercising their newfound cloud in unusual ways. These are the targets uh, which are uh, prepared for the leaders of the megacities in the future. 
we can go to the next slide, please. The next slide shows us slide number 18. That uh, wages uh, will be paid to the workers and building infrastructure projects will improve the local economy to a point where other mega projects become, are becoming viable. There is global awareness more than ever. Uh, countries are competing with, it, uh, with uh, other countries to stand out uh, on uh, these uh, mega projects. Uh, there is a desire, there is a feeling to impress uh, as global awareness improves, so does the desire to stand out and impress the rest of the world. And the mega projects become a source of national pride and a status symbol for emerging economies. So I can only say that mega projects are so attractive and uh, they are giving so much benefits. We can go to the next slide, please. The next slide is talking about employment and unemployment and how that is affected by mega projects. There will be new jobs, you know, there, in spite of growing worries of jobs being automated out of existence are causing elected officials to search for new jobs. New jobs, mega projects bring new jobs directly and indirectly also. So directly through the construction work, uh, we have uh, projects where we have uh, workers with uh, 50,000 and 100,000 uh, workers on, on one of these mega projects. But uh, there are other reasons also that jobs will be created in the context, uh, I would call it secondary jobs uh, in the context of mega projects. They will rise in the priority as a potential source of work for the future unemployed people. Mega projects have a way of collateralizing themselves through the sheer size and impact of the project. There are claims <clears throat> that many projects will be based on unprovable claims and flawed accounting and <clears throat> spin-off economies will create an overpowering momentum to push them across the finish line. There is another uh, project in the south of Thailand. I think I've been talking about that. Uh, a big canal project, uh, which is also a mega project, uh, but not uh, with uh, a tunnel. Not with a tunnel as such. It's a canal project with 120 kilometers of length, uh, which will connect the uh, Indian Ocean with the Pacific Ocean. And there will be also a lot of direct and uh, let's let's call it primary jobs and secondary jobs in regard uh, to the uh, installation of these uh, mega projects. Next slide, please. Slide number twenty talks about the combination of bridges and tunnels. Uh, we have uh, the focus in the in the future in the next uh, dozen of slides. Uh, is given on four major bridge tunnel projects, which are redefining huma humanity, redefining humanity. I mean, this is something uh, which really uh, gives us uh, the feeling of the importance. The engineers argue the relative advantage and disadvantage of tunnels and bridges or a combination of both. So uh, we have to think about that that uh, both uh, needs uh, expertise, in particular when it comes to a combination of uh, bridges and tunnels. And uh, in uh, regard to the evaluation of advantages and disadvantages of both bridges and advantages and disadvantages of tunnels. Bridges look for sure far more impressive than tunnels yet they pose also challenges. And chips underpassing bridges are challenged by weather, ongoing maintenance and repair issues. And by the, by the simple fact that uh, ships are, uh, in particular container ships, 
are growing like uh, sky to skyscraper height. So if you remember the uh, Evergrande uh, uh, ship that uh, uh, was uh, capsized uh, in the Suez Canal last year, the height of these uh, uh, of these containers is 60 meters, 60 meter high container on a ship, you know, that, that is something, it's really a challenge. And if you, if you want to have a bridge for that, you have to <coughs> raise the bridge very high, or you have to make bridges which uh, have a, a mechanism to open and close the, the carriageway. So tunnels tend to be more expensive to build and operate, experiences far less deterioration over time. Uh, I think that is a statement which is questionable. If tunnels are really more expensive, I'm many times comparing uh, as a consultant, uh, comparing uh, tunnel solution and, and uh, uh, above ground uh, uh, bridge and viaduct solutions. And uh, I've uh, proven and, and I could show that uh, tunnels can be cheaper if you take uh, into consideration not only uh, the concrete and the steel which is used to build uh, to build a tunnel but uh, or to build a bridge but if you take into consideration life cycle cost if you take into consideration of the devaluation of environment uh, from a from a surface structure compared with a tunnel structure you can, uh, without a big problem, show that tunnels are cheaper. Okay, while a 100-year-old uh, tunnel is conceivable, a 100-year-old bridge is not. Uh, this is also something which uh, needs to be <coughs> defined on a case-by-case -case, uh, uh, study because we have we have some bridges uh, or or viaduct bridge type of viaduct bridges in the, from the old Roman Empire. So it's about 2000 years old, uh, which still exists, which still is in use, can be used, but uh, maybe uh, other criteria have been applied for the design of this type of uh, bridges. But in general, we can say that tunnels uh, are uh, longer lasting and uh, uh, are uh, <clears throat> more conceivable to long lasting uh, use than bridges do. Next slide, please. Uh, in regard to the design of transport tunnel, the key decision of a bridge and tunnel project is the design, whether it is for cars and trucks and trains, and whether it should include a provision for future form of tube transportation. The channel tunnel between the UK and France is only designed to accommodate passenger trains between the two countries. No provision is uh, taken uh, with regards to cars or trucks and no cargo and no provision for potentially faster tube train uh, is uh, taken into consideration in the channel tunnel. Uh, there is demand uh, uh, in the future, which will be which will make uh, decisions critical for projects and for different views uh, of uh, different cases and for different traffic demand also. So all these uh, are very basic uh, considerations uh, for the design of transport tunnels. Next slide, please. Uh, once again, I'm, I'm uh, uh, coming to the channel tunnel. Uh, I want to mention that the cost of this channel tunnel equals $22 billion. Of course, uh, uh, at the beginning when the tunnel started, it has been estimated much cheaper, uh, but uh, there was no detailed design at, at, the, at the beginning of the channel tunnel. Some uh, scenarios, uh, uh, risk uh, uh, considerations, there was no risk assessment, uh, risk uh, considerations and risk uh, management plans have been introduced later. Everything with that regard to, to uh, risk 
uh, has uh, finally added to the cost and has uh, by some uh, conditions which have been defined in the risk management plan. Uh, and the risk management plan and the geotechnical baseline reports, I have been talking about that many times in previous uh, virtual sessions uh, online here. So uh, there's a lot of money involved uh, in that uh, project and the, the amount of money of 22 billion already indicates that just by that, by definition, it's a mega project. The underground channel tunnel stretch is 31.4 miles between England and France underneath the channel. <clears throat> Out of these 34, uh, 31 miles, about two thirds is uh, under sea and the, the rest is tunneling uh, uh, on, the, on the mainland uh, of uh, France and UK. The salient features uh, of the channel tunnel, there are actually three tunnels not uh, one tunnel, three tunnels where two are for freight and passenger traffic and one is uh, for security in between the two other tunnels. The tunnel boring machines began excavating in 1988. The total number of tunnel boring machines at that time at the channel tunnel had been eight TBMs, at eight TBMs which worked at the same time. And very interesting uh, experiences have been learned from the from the TBMs of the channel tunnel. In particular, one, one very simple uh, uh, teaching has been that every TBM tunnel uh, driven, TBM driven tunnel has a learning course of one year. So it takes one year until the machine uh, it, it, it adopts to the geology until the equipment, the rest equipment adopts to the uh, machine and until all of the uh, staff uh, on the machine is also perfectly in handling the machine. So there's one year in every machine on the TBM excavation. The operation of the tunnel began in 1994. So after six years of uh, uh, tunnel construction, it began operation. It is the longest undersea uh, uh, tunnel of any tunnel in the, in the world until today. The next slide shows us a little bit more about the channel tunnel. Uh, I think it's a very interesting slide. You can see uh, both uh, on the UK side, Folkestone, uh, and on the front side, Calais, between these two uh, cities or sm small cities or villages. Uh, the tunnel has been driven. Uh, it is 50 kilometers long, uh, 40 kilometers is under the sea. Uh, then uh, we have the, the border under the sea also between French, France and United Kingdom. Uh, the tunnel is completely driven uh, in chalk and clay. So the geotechnical condition uh, have been very in, in favor of the tunnel driving, and there have been no uh, no major problems uh, with uh, uh, stability of uh, of uh, the excavation. There is a duct every 200 meters to equalize uh, the tunnel air pressures. Uh, there is a service tunnel in between, and we can see uh, the uh, two uh, tunnels which. In one cross section, you can see uh, a train with uh, taking carrying uh, on on top. We have uh, on top of uh, uh, the cars, uh, <clears throat> and we have on the other side we have the uh, passenger train also. So uh, that that is uh, the most famous and uh, breakthrough of mega projects in the world. Next slide. The next slide shows us four projects uh, causing global connectedness, which have been inimaginable in the past. And these uh, four projects, bridge tunnel or bridge tunnel projects, is the Gibraltar tunnel, it's the Korean-Japan friendship tunnel, 
it's the Bering Strait between United States or Alaska and uh, so and uh, Russia nowadays, where we have uh, uh, a lot of uh, <laughs> tensions and uh, a direct connection between uh, the two uh, uh, superpowers uh, with a bridge and tunnel system certainly could contribute to a better understanding between these two countries. And then we have the Darien gap, uh, which is uh, uh, on, the <coughs> uh, <coughs> on the Alaska, North America, so South America highway, a Pan American highway, it's called also in the Darien gap and where we also have the idea of uh, having a tunnel there, and I will elaborate a little bit more just in a few minutes. So we can go uh, keeping in mind these four tunnels to the next, to the Bering Strait tunnel between uh, 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 Russia and the United States. Uh, there are, and please uh, take a look at that, there are islands in between uh, these two. Uh, 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 in these two countries uh, linking together, building uh, by building a bridge tunnel system across the Bering Strait, which will effectively create a ground transportation link between North America and Asia. So imagine, you know, uh, uh, what happened in the past and what uh, will happen in the future. These uh, will have a significant, very heavy influence to the better understanding uh, uh, and to better communication uh, between these two countries. The benefits are there are a huge number of uh, obstacles, yes, also around the design, engineering, and paying for it. And the benefits will also be enormous. Uh, so uh, we really can think about that uh, very positively. And uh, several times in the last uh, 10 to 20 years, there have been serious intentions to start the work. And uh, several ideas have been implemented both for the tunnel solution or for the combined tunnel and bridge solution uh, for these uh, very interesting project. The next slide, please. The next slide shows again uh, what are the challenges in regard to engineering uh, of uh, such a, a bridge tunnel combination in a cold environment. The most likely design will involve a bridge tunnel system crossing relatively shallow Bering Strait between the Chukotka Peninsula in Russia and the Seward Peninsula in Alaska in the United States. What is the role of the islands? The two Diomet islands halfway between the peninsulas, the Bering Strait could be spanned by a bridge tunnel network with only long 25 mile bridge connecting Alaska and the Diomet islands and the tunnel connecting the Diomet islands with Russia. So this is something which is uh, again, uh, uh, something which uh, may have impact to international trade also, uh, because uh, under such conditions, there may be a better exchange of uh, trading goods of supplies or supply chains will benefit from, from that uh, bridge tunnel connection across the Bering Strait for sure also. The next slide, please. The proposal, the proposal uh, says that uh, in 2014, a, a 6,000 mile long high speed rail line from Manjuria to the United States was in consideration. The project would include a tunnel on the Bering Strait to connect China and Russia to the United States and Canada. So that is uh, something a far reaching impact uh, on the economies of these two countries. 
and the obstacles. There are obstacles for sure. The Russian side uh, of the strait is lacking uh, infrastructure. You know, this is empty, uh, empty land. There are no people there. It is, uh, there's no infrastructure. No railroads exist for over 2,000 miles in any direction from the strait. And the closest unpaved road is 1,200 miles away. So if this uh, project uh, Bering Strait is going into closer consideration, it cannot be focused only on the bridge tunnel co uh, connection. It has to be also focused on the connection on the land, both on the uh, Russian side and on the side of the United States and Canada. So uh, uh, President Putin of Russia approved the plan in 2008 as part of a 2030 development plan to build a railroad to the Bering Strait area. So that railroad uh, does not yet exist. So, but this is a precondition, and uh, if it starts uh, to be uh, to be uh, going into realization, then uh, it needs to be uh, seriously considered. Alaska has an estimated 750 miles of highway that would need to be built. Whereas Nome, the city in Alaska, closest to the uh, Bering Strait connection, is about 100 miles away with no ground transportation between Nome and other cities in Alaska. The cost estimate for the Bering Strait uh, bridge tunnel combination ranges from uh, 65 billion to 100 billion dollars. So these are all magnitudes. Uh, which uh, needs to be financed, needs to be managed financially, and uh, uh, I'm sure it can be done. The next slide, the next slide shows us the Darien Gate. <clears throat> Please take a look to the left side, where you can see North America and South America, and also the Pan American Highway, which is called Alaska Highway in the in the north. And uh, the uh, unofficial route, uh, which goes either through the center of the United States or along the Rocky Mountains down to Mexico and then from Mexico uh, via Panama to uh, Colombia. And uh, there is this gap uh, uh, where we can see in the middle between, I don't know whether you can see that, but. Uh, this is the Darien Gate, and here is an excerpt of the Darien Gate here, where we have uh, these two cities, which are not connected; they are disconnected right now. And uh, there is, there are jungles, and there are very difficult conditions. So most likely, a tunnel which is uh, on the right side of this slide, you can see you have the double deck tunnel here. You have a lot of uh, other infrastructure also. It's not a railway tunnel. It's a double deck tunnel where we have uh, in opposite direction, the, the vehicles uh, are running from east to west and from west to east uh, under the sea. So uh, this is uh, the missing link uh, of the Pan American Highway. And uh, this is uh, something, you know, because of this link before the Panama Canal was uh, constructed. So this uh, has been one of the reasons why they did construct the Panama Canal because the Panama Canal connects the uh, East Coast of the United States with the West Coast of the United States through the canal. But uh, the North-South connection, the uh, connection uh, on, on land with the uh, Pan American Highway would need that Darien gate. Okay, we can go to the next slide. The Darien gate, uh, there was a convention which has been signed uh, by the countries of North and South America uh, on, the, uh, on the, the aspect of the Pan American Highway, which should be built as a road connecting uh, these member countries of Colombia and Panama Canal. 
Uh, it's a uh, highway which should be built throughout both continents, except for the 60 mile stretch connecting Panama and Colombia. And the Pan American Highway consists of 19,000 miles of roads ranging from Purdue Bay in northern Alaska to Ushuaia in Argentina on the southern tip of the South uh, American continent with one, uh, only one link missing exactly in the middle of, uh, the, two, uh, of the two countries. Uh, the obstacle begins in Yavisa uh, in Panama and ends in Turbo in Colombia, 60 miles away. It's a sensitive area filled with jungles, mountains, swamps, and wildlife, including mosquitoes carrying malaria to dang fever. So this is not something uh, which, we, which we can neglect because uh, uh, malaria and mosquitoes have been uh, the biggest uh, obstacle in the construction of the Panama Canal. The Panama Canal uh, had uh, 12,000 victims, 12,000 people have died when the, when the canal was constructed uh, about 100 years ago. So there are concerns that many governments, officials, uh, are concerned about opening a channel for drug traffickers between North and South America. So the, the drug uh, market uh, is uh, benefiting uh, from uh, uh, this uh, type of, of uh, infrastructure. This is the concern that it is benefiting. Uh, I personally think that uh, this concern exists for the channel tunnel as well as for the Feynman Belt Tunnel or for any other mega project, we have to uh, install respective controls. And uh, what, the, what the benefit of uh, the pandemic, uh, which we have experienced during the past two years is, one of the benefits is that there is more control and there's a fantastic experience to control people who go from uh, one side of a, of a tunnel to the other side uh, of uh, one side of infrastructure to the other side of the infrastructure. So the control tools, the technology of control has improved a lot. And uh, I would say that uh, these concerns can be considered this concern. Next slide, please. The next slide shows us the missing link uh, between Japan and South Korea, in South Korea, in Busan and Karatsu, in, uh, <clears throat> in Japan. And there are some uh, uh, islands in between, also Iki Island and artificial islands also. Several routes have been uh, considered for the Japan-Korea bridge tunnel. It's again a bridge tunnel connection, mega project bridge tunnel connection. And on the next slide, I can show you also the concerns of the uh, officials that uh, uh, not only is, is cost, but there are other concerns also. So from the point of view of cost, it has been estimated that this uh, Japan-Korea friendship tunnel will cost about uh, $70 billion. The tunnel would provide savings of about 30% uh, in cost of transporting goods. It would benefit passenger travel with travel times around five hours from Seoul, capital of uh, South Korea, to Osaka, which is uh, 1,040 kilometers away, and seven hours from uh, Seoul to Tokyo, which is 1,500 kilometers away. The tunnel would uh, assist in the creation of the proposed b Seto. Beijing Seoul Tokyo Highway Plan, which would connect six megacities with Shanghai, Tianjin, Beijing, Seoul, Osaka, and Tokyo. A fantastic uh, project, which would uh, uh, keep, uh, which would bring the two countries, the two economies, the two uh, people closer together. Uh, there is a Japanese study uh, that the cost of freight transported through the tunnel 
would be 25% less of those related to traditional maritime shipping. Maritime shipping is the cheapest uh, way to, to uh, move uh, goods and supplies, but this would be cheaper than maritime shipping by 25%. And uh, Korea has some concerns and uh, Korea does see obstacles. As it reported in 2007, that the construction would uh, 15 to 20 years, take 15 to 20 years for the construction. Uh, and uh, it would be five times the cost and three times the construction time of a channel tunnel, of the channel tunnel, uh, the channel tunnel, which, I, which we have uh, learned uh, as an example of the first mega project in the world. Now, <clears throat> the opponents of the project say that uh, the tunnel would help Japan to expand its economic and political influence into the Asian continent now, uh, I, I think this is some of a emotional and, and, and feeling concern. I, I don't think that it is uh, really going to happen. So let me uh, think about the slide I have. The And uh, <clears throat> the proposed bridge tunnel project to connect Japan with South Korea uh, under the sea would uh, be underpassing the Korea Strait. The distance is 80 miles at the nearest point. Latest proposal is 120 mile bridge tunnel. 120 miles is about uh, almost 200 kilometers. Now the conversation started in 1917, so more than 100 years ago. And since then, the discussion with many high ranking officials in both Japan and Korea, they have expressed interest, both, both of them. Now, <clears throat> the obstacles of each of the bridge tunnel project uh, has its own challenges. This one is by far the longest distance of such a bridge tunnel system. As new studies arise, cost and benefit projections raise a host of new arguments for and against the project. At some cost estimates now show it, it's, exceeding one, uh, it's exceeding $90 billion. And uh, there is some doubt that uh, it is wise, uh, that it is ever, ever paying itself back. So this is uh, for sure something which uh, is uh, in, in need of a financial uh, feasibility study. Okay, can go to the next slide, number 32. Again, to the North uh, Korean uh, Japan friendship project. Uh, <clears throat> it has remarkable similarities of the proposed uh, uh, Japan Korea tunnel with the channel tunnel. The tunnel faces technical issues and the mistrust of two former adversaries created by centuries of conflict in between the two countries. United Kingdom and France were able to overlook their historical divide. Remember that uh, they have been enemies for centuries. The addition of the fixed link to Europe, once believed to be impossible to build, and financially impractical resulted in numerous positive changes. The tunnel is in full swing of uh, maintenance, uh, full swing of operation, and uh, it, uh, it has very positive aspect with regard to reinvestment. So the most significant barrier was the loss of a key psychological barrier we are talking about the Channel Tunnel now, that previously held back many Britons and other Europeans from traveling to each other's nations. So there, there have been concerns, emotional concerns by the people themselves, which in practice 
does not show to happen. Because uh, as I know, there are people traveling in the morning from uh, Paris to London and in the evening back from London to Paris. And they all do it in, in one and a half, uh, less than two hours. And uh, that brings the two people uh, in spite of Brexit. We, we all know that there is Brexit. Uh, nobody is really happy with the Brexit, but it happened. So uh, in actually, uh, they have been able to overlook this uh, historical divide. The addition of the fixed link to Europe uh, has been believed to be impractical. And uh, the most significant loss was the, the geological barrier, uh, which has prevented uh, before people traveling from uh, UK to, uh, to Europe. Okay, we can go to the next, uh, which is the Strait of Gibraltar. I've been working on that project uh, about 15 years ago. While the image shows what looks like an easy span to cross the actual construction of the bridge tunnel across the Strait of Gibraltar will require extremely uh, sophisticated engineering. So this is uh, engineering, you can see, uh, it's a bridge tunnel co uh, connection. That is one of the proposal. Other proposal is doing it just under the strait without uh, using a bridge in between. So there are several proposals. There are several uh, memorandum of understandings between the government of Spain and, and the government of uh, the, the two kingdoms. Spain is a kingdom and and uh, Morocco is a kingdom also. The two kings actually signed uh, several memorandum of understanding. Uh, International Tunneling Association has been working <coughs> on this project also and has contributed significantly to identify challenges there. And uh, it has been moving, moving. And I think it's a project which is going to happen right now. There are psychological, uh, for sure, psychological effects because uh, the African continent has a population pressure against Europe. Uh, many people like to go to Europe because they think in Europe they have a better life. I personally think that uh, Africa has a lot of future and many of these people will be needed in Africa. So the population pressure will be less, but for sure, in regard to trade, there will be more trade between uh, Africa in the north and uh, Europe in the south, and that will benefit uh, to the project. And I think the project will uh, come into, into a, a more concrete, beyond feasibility study into more project uh, phase. Next slide, please. It's again a slide about the uh, Gibraltar uh, bridge tunnel combination. Strait is the narrowest waterway separating Europe of Africa uh, with a distance which is not very much, only of nine miles. A number of geological issues make the crossing of this short stretch uh, of the ocean a quite complicated engineering design and physical challenge also. The Spain and Morocco appointed in 1979 a joint committee to investigate the feasibility of linking the two continents resulting in the Euromed transport project. So it's a paper tiger right now. Uh, there are numerous tunneling projects which have been proposed in the past and governments in both Africa and Europe would love to see it happen. So far, uh, no one has come up with a complete plan for dealing with all of the extreme engineering challenges and the necessary funding. So the engineering challenges I'm just repeating uh, are not only the fact that we have high uh, water pressure and we have high geomechanical conditions because of the fractions in between the two continents, but also in regard to removing eventual uh, exhaust uh, in the tunnel. So there will be a big challenge in regard to the ventilation aspect of the, of the project. The tunnel would be 25 miles long. 
roughly 1,000 feet underground and take 15 years to complete. Cost estimate ranges from 10 to 25 billion. So it's a very rough uh, cost estimate at, at this moment. <clears throat> okay, so let's go to the next slide. And the next slide talks about another very interesting uh, project, which is not between two countries. It's only between uh, two islands on the, in the same country of Indonesia. The Nusantara Tunnel uh, is currently preparing to construct a 33 kilometer subsea twin tunnel crossing the Sunda Street between uh, Java and, uh, uh, and Borneo. The tunnel links Java and Sumatra Island. Its uh, circular cross section will be 8.3 meters. The tunnel will cross Brechtias uh, geologically wise at about 150 uh, meters under the mean sea uh, water level. The maximum hydrostatic pressure is expected to be 15 bars. So 15 bars is only 30% of what we expect under the Gibraltar Sp uh, Strait Tunnel. The minimum soil layer between the tunnel center line and the seabed is about uh, 70 meters. The maximum seawater depth is around 80 meters. Uh, the Nusantara Tunnel uh, of Indonesia is currently seeking the most suitable tunnel boring machine to complete the project and is also looking for contractors, consultants, and world-class professionals to participate in the job. So there is a need for experts there. And there are some contradictions in the project. Uh, at this moment, if we look to the next slide, please, we will see in the next slide, the over next slide. No, no, that's okay, 36 is okay. The tunnel constitutes an interconnected twin tunnel 33 kilometer that will be constructed in two phases. Each tunnel is of double elliptical shape. So this is the previous design. So this is not the final design right now. And uh, with an 8.5 meter flat side and the 65, 6.6 uh, uh, meter vertically height, carrying the two way single track electric train, uh, which is uh, the geometrical condition of the design. The traffic capacity is expected to be uh, 15,500 passengers, passenger car units per day. And the first phase of the tunnel will cost about 1.5 to $2 billion to construct and uh, <clears throat> about uh, $4 million per year for maintenance, operation, and repair. The toll fee uh, is uh, expected to be as much as $20 per passenger to travel one way. And the time required to making the one way trip would be about one hour. So it's a, it's a project, uh, you know, the, uh, Indonesia is the biggest uh, Islamic country in the world with a population of uh, 20, uh, 20 uh, uh, of 225 million people. It's a, a country consisting only of uh, islands. And these are the big, biggest islands, the two biggest islands to connect them. There are also plans for a new capital to be uh, in, in Borneo and uh, Kalimantan. Uh, and uh, these uh, will also uh, need to be better connected to the other, at least to the biggest islands of, uh, of uh, Indonesia. So I think that uh, it has a big chance to be realized, but it needs uh, some more expertise in order to explain that uh, if we look to the next slide, number 37, uh, which shows <clears throat> the area of Sumatra and Java and the Sunda Strait in between these two islands <clears throat> and the distance in between. So, uh, it, it definitely is in, in need of more expertise. It's a very early stage right now. So we go to the next slide. The next slide shows what uh, uh, on the right side, you can see these uh, twin tunnels uh, in the upper right corner and the geometry uh, is uh, not the geometry which uh, 
is the most likely to, to happen. It, it looks like a geometry to be, to be excavated with conventional uh, tunneling, means uh, drill and bust and uh, uh, shot creed and so on. So that is not going to happen. I think uh, uh, this is uh, not real. On the other side, you can see the Sunda Strait, uh, Sumatra and Java in between. And uh, there's also uh, an island. Maybe they, they will do another uh, combination of bridge tunnel for this project uh, and uh, apply a more advanced uh, design. If we look to the next slide, then we can also see that uh, there are other very interesting mega projects in the world right now. And one of these uh, is the so-called Katara Depression Tunnel Project, which uh, connects the Mediterranean Sea uh, with the uh, Katara Depression, uh, which is a hole uh, in the desert of the Sahara, uh, which is west of Alamein and south of Mersa Matrut. And uh, you can see the Kara oasis in between. And uh, what we also see is Cairo and uh, the capital of uh, Egypt and Alexandria and the so-called Nile Delta. The Delta, uh, it shows the map of the Katara Depression with waterway routes. All proposed routes for a tunnel and or canal from the Mediterranean Sea towards the Katara Depression. I have been working on that project uh, some uh, 30 years, 35 years ago, more than uh, maybe almost 40 years ago, uh, on in particular on a tunnel solution between the Mediterranean Sea and the Katara Depression. And uh, uh, that's, in, that's also a project which is more than 100 years old. Now the <clears throat> Katara Depression lies 60 meters below sea level on an average uh, in a vast uninhabited desert. Uh, no, no people, only some cam camels. It is the intention to connect uh, the region of the Katara Depression with the Mediterranean Sea, with tunnels and or canals, and the water could flow into the area. The water could evaporate because the desert climate and continuous flow of water could be created once inflow and evaporation were balanced out. So uh, do understand that uh, the Katara depression is 60, 70 meters below the level of the Mediterranean Sea. So there is a sufficient water hand uh, to, to uh, uh, let the water flow from the Mediterranean Sea uh, to the Katara depression and even uh, get some uh, some energy. I'm uh, elaborating that now. Uh, that the hydropower uh, could be generated. Hello, hello. 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 Hello, Anyway, there is a, a creation of, <clears throat> of a hypersaline lake in the Katara depression, which would result in salt pans uh, on the side as the water evaporates and salt uh, leaves the salt contained behind. The Katara depression would return from its current state uh, with a sub soils of tens of uh, meter higher. So the, that's a real hydropower project also. Next project, uh, next slide, 41. In 41, uh, we can also uh, explain a little bit more about uh, the proposals for a large canal or tunnel being excavated of about 55 uh, miles or 100 kilometers, depending on the route, which is chosen from the Mediterranean Sea to bring the seawater into the Katara depression area. Alternatively, there would be also a pipeline uh, to the, uh, from the uh, Nile River uh, <coughs> with fresh water uh, to the south of the uh, city of Rosetta. Uh, Egypt, uh, in comparison, just the Suez Canal is currently 193 kilometers long. 
by balancing the inflow and evaporation, the lake's water level can be held constant. And uh, the lake level uh, would uh, be uh, 60, 50 meters below the sea level. The next slide. So uh, it's the Mekong River Basin project. It's also a huge future a tunnel project, uh, which affects uh, uh, the Mekong uh, uh, community of China, uh, Vietnam, uh, Laos, uh, Cambodia, and Thailand. The Royal Irrigation Department has studied uh, uh, both the feasibility, the environmental impact assessment, and the strategic environmental assessment of the Mekong Lloyd Chi Moon water management by gravity in the uh, northeastern region of the country. The Loe River should be improved, dredging the diversion canal, boring the diversion tunnel, and constructing the distribution canal for irrigation and flood prevention could be carried out. The area is quite arid, quite dry. The diversion tunnel would focus on the development model in phase one and sort out the appropriate alternative for development considering the budget break-even point, development distribution problems, urgent need, and the hydraulic flow. Uh, definitively, it would uh, increase the fertility and improve the agriculture conditions in that area. We can go to the next slide. The next slide uh, shows you just uh, where we are in, in Southeast Asia here. On the right side, we can see uh, the uh, uh, river, the Mekong River, and the countries which are in, uh, affected here by the Mekong River, the Mekong River from the north to the south, ending in uh, uh, the south of uh, Vietnam. And on the right side, you can see the area where uh, the tunnels are uh, intended to be built. Uh, they have been studied. I have been a member of that study team at the time. And there's a total of almost 800 kilometers of uh, tunnels in, in that area. We can go to the next slide. And uh, the next slide just uh, explains the key objective. The key objective is to provide water availability from the Mekong River by gravity, by gravity only. So this is uh, supported by the, uh, by the head of, of the river. Uh, but uh, another key objective is also the irrigation objective, uh, the uh, irrigation to distribute the water into the areas in the Northeast by gravity only. Most of the Northeastern project use water by pumping which is uh, energy and uh, uh, not using the gravity, which is the natural uh, potential for hydropower. And also, uh, this is uh, also affected uh, the uh, flood situation. Almost every year there are in that area uh, floods and the flood can be better controlled uh, with this uh, Mekong River Tunnel uh, proposal, uh, diversion tunnel proposal. Next slide, and I would like to come to the uh, conclusion and summary. There are multiple trends driving the ambition for mega projects <coughs> in the future. We have emerging technology and automation which will make these type of projects more affordable and technically doable, feasible. Uh, from the point of view of uh, technology, uh, connectedness would be improved because increasing the level of connectedness uh, and uh, driving needs for efficient travel and shipping around the world would uh, be the drivers for these mega projects. Uh, in the future, we have uh, everywhere uh, employment uh, problems, uh, so uh, the future employment will benefit uh, from the technological development and countries will be looking for mega projects to re-employ and to provide employment for future generations. The chances for implementation of each of these projects mentioned is big in my opinion. It's not a matter of if, it's more a matter uh, to be built, but it's a matter of when it will be built with one exception, 
and that is the transatlantic tunnel. So with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. It has been uh, exciting uh, to be with you during this uh, whole session today. I, I really ap appreciate it, all of you. And, and uh, I would like uh, to leave some inspiration in your, in your thinking, in your emotions, in your feelings, uh, that uh, tunneling is something which provides us future. It provides future to the human society under conditions of, uh, um, as mentioned, development of rural and urban uh, development and uh, uh, also uh, of the technological development. So it's really great to be with you, with the younger generation of uh, tunnel engineers. And uh, I'm, I'm sure many of you will be excited to, to work on tunneling. And with that, I would like to conclude and uh, uh, would like to invite you for any questions which you may have to the broad variety of projects which I presented to you today. So question and answer, I look forward to give you the answer. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. We are hearing, sir. Hello. Yes, yes. If if you have a question, I would be very pleased to answer. No, sir. Uh, the uh, presentation was very nice. It was self-explanatory, and it was very nice, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, are there any more questions? You can also write your question down and uh, leave it uh, to uh, uh, Kone Kal Kalpana uh, of the Tunneling Association of India and the Central Board of Irrigation of Power, Mr. Sunil Sharma. <clears throat> and uh, I will, uh, for any uh, written question, I will give you an answer in writing. Uh, and and uh, that will be uh, distributed through the organization of uh, Tunneling Association of India. Yes. So we are really thankful to Dr. Harald Wagner for making so many virtual sessions, particularly to update the knowledge of Indian tunnel professionals, those who are involved with the tunnel and underground space development in different projects and for the different sector projects. So it will be a great association and look forward for many such association for the benefit of Indian professionals. So I also Thank thankful you. to all the participants for nicely or interactive session making more interactive. If still they have any questions, they can write back to the Tunneling Association of India. And then we will try to get the answer and Certainly, we will update you with the revised answer or whatever it is, your queries and all. So with these words, I really uh, thank you all for this, and we can close the session. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much, uh, both Mr. Sunil Sharma and Mr. Alok Kumar yes. for uh, hosting this, this session. It really has been exciting uh, to be with you and I look forward to continue uh, being with you with Tunneling Association of India in the future. I have, I have a lot of uh, ambition, I have a lot of inclination to work with you in the future and I look forward and uh, the pandemic will some days will have an end uh, and, and uh, we will be able to uh, <coughs> have uh, better uh, communication, maybe we enrich, we did enrich actually communication with these uh, online virtual sessions in the past uh, 20, 24 months or so. But uh, in the future, we will have in addition also, I think, face to face meetings. Yes. And uh, uh, Sunil Sharma knows about uh, my engagement uh, in the Vishnu God People uh, Koti uh, project. So we will have you uh, soon uh, a virtual session 
on the BPHEP, on the Vision Got People Coffee project. And uh, by the middle of the year, maybe there will be more possibilities to interact and to uh, uh, get uh, creative ideas uh, in, the, in the future for the benefit of Tunneling Association of India, for the benefit of Indian people, for the benefit of Asian people in, in, in general. And uh, I would like to be very supportive of any idea uh, with, uh, that, uh, with that regard. So I, I, I think that uh, also I'm, I have uh, <clears throat> been allowed to uh, use the, the virtual uh, sessions and the online uh, conferences of the past uh, 20, 25 months to make a book out of it. Uh, this book is called Usable Grounds, where usable states for unite, sustain, above and below ground. And it's a book on tunnel engineering with many, many uh, examples uh, in, in the book, all real examples, uh, most of them personal experiences also. But I think it will be interesting for everybody uh, in, in the uh, Tunneling Associ Association of India when this book really uh, is, uh, is getting birth, is, is, is get, getting uh, printed, then uh, everybody would be able to take a look to, to that book. And that I would like to uh, thank the Tunneling Association of India deeply for, for helping, for assisting, for supporting, and for all of the great communications which we had in the past. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so very much. Uh, Dr. Harald Wagner, one minute. We have also online with uh, Mr. Khali, and uh, who is basically the uh, looking after the execution of Vishnugar People Koti project, and he is a vice president of Tunneling Association of India. I request him to say a few words because he is associated with the project, with the association, and also he knows you personally. So I yes. request him to say a few words. Thank you. Good thank afternoon, you. Dr. Wagner. It's very nice to see you, and uh, now uh, you must be keeping very good health now. Yes, uh, thank there you. was some problem, and then we all were worried. Uh, it was a nice presentation today, and I was throughout. I was involved in this, so I was I was attending since beginning. So it's uh, it's very educative and it's very good for all my engineers and all other people. And regarding you mentioned about the Vishnugar people Koti, now it is progressing very well. I just want to tell you that we are about to start the TVM again. Right. So we have we have we have crossed all the hurdles of RBM which we were getting, and now we are all set to start the TVM and. Uh, we want to see you here in our project. Thank you very and, much. Uh, I'm, I'm handling uh, uh, from FCC side, all three projects here. And uh, presently my base is here in uh, uh, District Chamoli only at People Kutri site. So yes. now uh, all fronts, including dam and tunnel, and most of the DBM part, we have already finished in this tunnel. Now, TBM is all set to start. So we have checked the TBM, only 60 meter portion is left out in RPM that we are doing manually. Yes. That will be finished by end March or by latest by first week of April. So by second week of April, we'll be starting this. And we want to, we want to see your presence also here because you are since beginning, you are involved in this project. Right. Well, it will be a pleasure if you are if you are here. Thank you, thank you so thank much. You, I mean, if, <clears throat> I'm I'm very happy to see you because we have been knowing each other for more than yes, ten years. Year. Yes, and we have been together not only in India. We have been together also in in Dubrovnik, and we have been together in in uh, Naples, and uh, we have met yeah, many yeah. times yes, sir. also. Yes, sir. At, at the seminar, so I'm I'm very very glad and very feel 
pleased and honored to, to see you here and to see you uh, at, at the next uh, virtual conference. I think it's uh, scheduled to be on the... Uh, yeah, in September. Sir. No, no, the virtual conference is in, in early March. There's a, a virtual conference uh, arranged uh, by, uh, by, by DHDCIL uh, on the on yeah, the yeah you are coming there okay okay yes. okay we will we will meet there we will we I'll will be, meet there. there virtually we will meet we will see each other on the, on the on the screen on the on the laptop then and then we can communicate i'm very very happy about that you know very happy it's moving forward and the uh, information coming from the site and also through you are very uh, optimistic and very hopeful so I look very much forward to, to that uh, uh, event, which is only uh, about two, two weeks or so from now. So uh, yeah. also let, let me assure you that uh, I feel very good uh, uh, after I had, uh, uh, four years ago, I had a surgery and uh, you may have heard about that, but uh, it was a brilliant doctor which uh, has treated me and, and uh, has made me, <laughs> uh, Stronger than before, yes. stronger than before. It's, it's, it's really great, sir. And then so seeing you healthy, and uh, we are we are really very happy. And thank uh, you. That time it, we were all worried uh, about your health. Now you have improved, and seeing you healthy and hearty, that that is our pleasure, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Khalil. I, I very much appreciate that. Thank, Thank you, you all. Thank you all. We'll close this session. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Sunil Sharma, also for your moderation. I appreciate it a lot. And I'm uh, uh, expecting to, to uh, further communicate with you. Thank you. Right. And Thank kind, you. kind regards to General uh, uh, Suresh Sharma also. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay.